Hello and welcome. I am Flat Cap Callum and this is Day 3 Cheltenham Festival 2022 Staking Plan video. Or I nearly actually forgot what I was doing. Uh, welcome everybody to Day 3's Staking Plan. So, if you've watched the last two, you know the gig. I'm going to do a quick recap, then I'm going to go through the horses um, and I'll give you a bit of blurb as we go through. It's the normal staking plan. It's a £50 staking plan, £39 on singles, 11 on accumulators in the same specific way. This is designed to help those people who need a bit of inspiration, a bit of uh, kind of new, maybe new to it, or maybe your long time better and, and long time loser. I don't know. Um, the vast majority of people out there who put bets on lose in the long term. The reason I set up my daily channel and the reason I'm doing you know, this specific Cheltenham series is mainly because I want to help people um, make a bit of money from the bookies. That's the ultimate aim. So I've got lots of years. I've, I've been betting all of my adult life, um, lots of years and experience of, of kind of betting. And there's, there's kind of two ways of, of, of looking at things. There's one of betting market analysis and trying to work out how you get value in the betting market. The other bit is actually looking at form um, and trying to read read where you're at with it. So I combine the two things together to make my selections. Normal channel, I do mainly accumulators, mainly what I would say are high risk bets, but we get a long term profit. What we're doing here in the staking plan is what I would describe as medium risk. So you're more likely to get some money back. You are less likely to win big. So if you want to win big, this ain't the channel for you. If you want a guaranteed win, there's no such thing as that uh, out there. So what have I got for you today? We'll find out in a minute. We will do the recap of today. Today, today is a horse racing tipsters absolute nightmare. And the reason is, for those of you who've been around, you'll get this. But if you're new to horse racing, the fact that the going conditions at Cheltenham change so quickly and so dramatically and so unexpectedly completely throws out any plans you had around the horses you took. I built a staking plan that was about horses running on good to soft ground, soft in places. When it suddenly becomes heavy, all bets are off, literally, in terms of it causes non-runners, it causes decent horses like Shishkin to not run well at all and ultimately pull up. It gives you surprises. So the staking plan I did was stacked against with horses on, on better ground than what happened today. But if you did all the bets and you followed them all, you'll know we did actually get away with it and we came out with actually a little bit of profit, although halfway through it looked pretty grim. So um, the headline was we had 19 horses yesterday across the staking plan. Seven of them pulled up in the ground. Five of them were non-runners. One fell and that left us six horses that finished in a race. Fortunately, one of them won and three of them placed and that was enough to get us a profit so i say I get away with it so i'm not taking any any great delight in saying smashed it out today you know how clever was i i absolutely like most several people got it wrong but i managed to get away with it is how i would describe it so we'll see T tomorrow's staking plan for what we've got for day three is stacked with horses that like heavy soft going that's how i've done it so if the ground dries up i'm in massive trouble Okay, how do we go then? So we had in the Ballymore, Journey With Me fell, Stage Star pulled up, no return. Brown Advisory, Brave Man's Game, non-runner. Fury Road, non-runner. 3 under 3 five, could only get sixth. So we got refunded on two bets in that one. We then had the Coral Cup. The Shunter pulled up. Corby Lord pulled up. Don Levon just about finished. Um... And hang in there, non-runner. So we got a £2 refund for that race. Not going well at all at this point. We then hit the champion chase. We had a single on Shishkin. It pulled up. Nuba Negra was a non-runner. It was all looking very, very grim. Uh, and someone quite rightly put out in the video yesterday, all your horses have lost. At that point, they did do. Sometimes it just can turn around on a sixpence. In the cross country, we had plan of attack. Placed 25 to 1 was the SP. And then the other horse, uh, two FME, did pull up. So we got a little bit back. So something to shout about, but not very exciting. And then very fortunately or cleverly, you can decide whatever you want to call it. In the Grand Annual, we had before midnight, non-runner. 
Editor Dejit placed 15 to 2, so we've got a couple of quid back. Gumball pulled up, but Global Citizen, it was 40s when I did the video. 28 was the only, it was the starting price. That's the price we got on terms of statistics, 28 to 1. So that sorted out our day nice and proper. And then the champion bumper, uh, we had Joyu Makin, that was pulled up as well. And then Seabank Bistro on the channel, it was 40 to 1. You could have got 50s in places. It only SP'd at 18 to 1. So those two in the end were much, much bigger prices before they went in in the market um, and they saved the day. That's that's how that bit went in accumulator land. Never happened in my whole life, I don't think, of putting on a lucky 15 bet. All four horses pulled up in the ground. All four. I don't believe that's ever happened to me before. So that was terrible. Um, and if you were just following just the accumulator bets, you would not have made any money today in terms of profit. So it was really disappointing. I did do another lucky 15 bet uh, on my on my daily channel. That did break even just about with two places and a non row. And the winner had Trixie, uh, so we had uh, sixth place, non-runner and pulled up, and we had non-runner, pulled up, second. Not great. And then in the sixth fold, we had win, non-runner, pulled up, pulled up, second, non-runner. So, Global Citizen, thanks very much. You made me look a lot better than it was going to be. Okay, so what have we got today? Uh, coming up for day three. Day three is my favourite day for betting at Cheltenham. It's not necessarily going to say it's going to be going to win. <laughs> We're going to win loads of money, but because there's three handicaps open to all age groups, um, so across Cheltenham there's eight handicaps open to all age groups. Um, we've had three, and we've had the winner of two out of three. We've got three on day three and two on day four. So I'm not saying, look at me, I'm picking all the winners of the handicaps because it can go very, very wrong um, <laughs> with all of these ones for day three. But what I'm saying to you is they're the races I enjoy betting on and trying to find the value in the market. So uh, what have we got? Here's what we got. In the turners, that's the weakest race of the, of the week in terms of a betting heat. There's a four horses. I, I want to have an interest as, as far as what we're doing on here for the striking plan. Bob Ollinger, I would split is the one for me um only by by mildly so we're going to go four pound win on bob ollinger uh it could just easily come second it looks like the front two are clearly going to be the front two then we've got the per temps um skybet are paying eight places some bookies are seven some are only six so definitely a race for skybet customers this one to take advantage of we've got a four pronged attack or one pound each ways so we've got winter fog 13 to 2 the jam man 14 to 1 Third Wind, 20 to 1. Mill Green, 33 to 1. We've then got the Ryanair. I'm an Aloha man. I think that's the right horse to win. It's not worth a single bet, even on this sort of uh, staking plan. So we're going to go and try and do what we did with the Champion Hurdle and try and not find horses to come second and third. I'm really hoping we don't get any more non-runners. There's only eight in that, so we get three places. If there's a non-runner, they'll only pay each way the first two. So we've gone two in here, Melon at 16s, one pound each way, Mr. Fisher 28s, one pound each way. Okay, moving on. The stayers hurdle. Um, floor importer, I backed it last year when it won a decent price. I'm sticking with it. I've stuck with it all season. I've got faith in that horse. It's a very, very competitive race and you do get funny results. So I'm not going to spread the bet too thinly um, because I don't want to use a lot of stake on that. I'd rather use the stake on the handicaps for singles. But we're going £2 win flooring porter and we're going to go the each way play. So Sky Bet are four places. Some other bookies are two, not everyone. But it's worth a go, particularly if you get four places. Liz Nagar Oscar for me is the value at 28 to 1 at one pound each way. We've then got the plate handicap, which I think is the most competitive one of the whole day, definitely. Um, there's a lot in there with chances. So I'm going for attack here. Um, Sky bet are seven places on this race. A lot of bookies are six five. So have a real look around. We're going Grand Paris 13 to 2. Fusel Raffles 10 to 1. I've been really sweet on that one. I talked about it on my anti post video. Um, it's 10 to 1's a bit short, but we're still having having it today. Spirit of the game, 16 to 1. And then I, I knew I wouldn't be able to pronounce this name. 
Shahalian Munro, we're going to go with. I apologise if you're the owners of that horse and I pronounced it terribly wrong. But that's the one, 28 to 1, uh, and they're all £1 each way bets on those. OK, final two races. We've got the Mare's Novice. Now, that's another interesting one. Sky Bet a 5 on this. Most bookmakers are 4. Um, it's a competitive race. Um, so we're going Love Envoy, 10 to 1. Impervious is one. I've, I've looked at this horse all season for this race. Um, it hasn't run since November, and that's the one, one worry I've got with it. But we're sticking with it 12 to 1. And then the big price of the day, only, the only bet we're doing 50 pence each way, so it's half of what we're normally doing, is Monichateur or Mui, 150 to 1. Those regular viewers on my channel will know we've had this horse before and it got fourth place at 150 to 1 and it was paid out on Skybet. So we've got previous here and I think it's just overpriced. So I want to have a little go paying five places. I think it's worth a little snip. Um, so Monish or Mui, just picking horses I can't read today purely. Um, then the Kimye, um, and we're six places sky bet. A lot of bookmakers are five or four, so have a look. Omar Moretti, 12 to 1. Cat Tiger, 18 to 1. And Larry, 40 to 1. Those are the three. Okay, those are the singles. Now we're going to move on to the accumulators. And I can't tell you how frustrating the accumulators have been because I've had some Decent price winners and decent price each way horses, but failed to get most of them in any accumulators for my videos on the channel. It's driving me potty to have a 28 to 1 winning yesterday and not have it in the accumulator. Annoying. So, this is it. These are the four best ones I've got, I think, for the lucky 15s. Um, we got a profit on this bet on day one. They all pulled up yesterday. <laughs> Who knows how it's going to go? So it was a 20 pence each way lucky 15. So it's each way singles, doubles, trebles and accumulator. And if you put it on with some bookmakers, only one win, but they all run, you will get double the odds for the single bet. So we've got 210 Third Wind, 410 Spirit of the Games, 450 Love Envoy, 530 Cat Tiger. That's day three's lucky 15. And then we'll go to day three's Trixie Bets. So... Trixie bets. Um, oh, piece of paper's going everywhere. Um, so the each way Trixie we've got in there. It's twenty five pence each way Trixie. We've got the Jam Man in the two ten, the two fifty Melon, and the three thirty Lisnagar Oscar twenty eight. So that's the each way Trixie. And just a reminder, because I haven't said it, I don't think all of these odds are illustrative purposes. When I record the statistics, I will take the starting prices for all of these. So. Yesterday, uh, on day two, if I'd done the the, uh, the prices I got here, I'd have had a better result because 40 to 1 on Global Citizen and 40 to 1 on uh, on the place horse in the bump, which I can't remember what it was called now, uh, would have got us a better return. So starting prices is all I'm doing. And then the win trick seat, we've got 130 Bob Ollinger, 250 Alaho and 330 Flooring Porter. That's our 50p win trick seat. So that's doubles and treble win bet. And then finally, our sixfold, which is our what I would call a dreamy bet. So it's the one that is very unlikely to come in. But if it does, we'll be dancing around because we'll have a lot of money. Um, and this is much bigger prices than the, the first uh, two days. Because there was less runners in some of the races, there were shorter prices. This, this is a valuable bet if it was to come in. So we've got the 210 third wind. And a flag, I would say, in the first two days, I've done the first six races. But because the first race tomorrow is only four runners, I've done this as the last six races. So 210, third wind, 250 Alaho, 330 Flooring Porter, 410 Fusil Raffles, 450 Love Envoy, 530 Omar Moretti. 50 pence each way, six fold accumulator. OK, that's what we've got. Hopefully out of those 19, we'll have less non-runners and less horses pulling up. And we might make some money. Overall, uh, it, yesterday it finished £50 on, 58 70 back. Um, which leaves us £132 back from a £100 bet. So the, the aim here is, can we make a profit each day? And can we make a profit by the end of the week? So day one, day two, we've made a profit. Which I'm delighted about, particularly because of today. It was hard work. Um, we've basically made two-thirds of our £200 in the first two days so we've got half of the racing and we need to make a third of the money that sounds really easy and achievable 
it can all go very wrong very, very quickly. So there are no guarantees. So I'm not advising betting massive amounts of money on any of these horses. You can take it with a pinch of salt, decide what you do with selections. That is my full stake in plan that I'm giving you guys. Um, and whether you swap, change and take what you want, up to you. The main goal for me is people watching this get some benefit from it and hopefully make a bit of money because most people don't make money from the bookmakers long term. That's the end for tonight. In, hope you enjoyed the video. Like it if you want to and subscribe if you want the regular updates. And I hope we all have a great day and I will see you in the morning if you want additional accumulators on my normal daily channel. And if you just want the staking plan, come back tomorrow, half nine in the evening. That's what time I should be putting the video out. Okay, thanks very much. Cheerio.